everyone, welcome back to another episode of Reapercast. So more cards have actually been announced for the Burst of Destiny, so I definitely have to talk about all of these. I think this one is going to be very interesting because we are getting more cards here, or at least more support announced for the Despian's archetype. And it's an archetype that hasn't actually been released yet, but we're already knowing that we're getting new support right here. I believe the first set of support is coming out in Dawn of Majesty, and seeing that it's coming out in the following set here, Burst of Destiny, is definitely going to be quite fantastic. Because even after going over the cards of the Despian archetype last time that was firstly introduced, it didn't necessarily draw me into it yet, it didn't really hold my attention, so with that being said, I would like to see a lot more of these cards and determine whether or not it's actually worth going into as an archetype that I might want to build. But with that being said, there's really not much else to say about it other than to actually go over each of these individual cards and seeing whether or not there's some kind of synergetic effect that might be going on that gives it a unique playstyle that would capture my attention. So the first card we have here is Ad Libtum of Despia, a level 8 Dark Fairy effect monster. So I do like the typing of it, a Dark Fairy which is something that is akin to Dark Lords, but if this could actually be incorporated in such a way, that would be great. But if it's too archetypal supportive, then that is definitely going to be quite the problem and I might not go into it. So it has 1500 attack and 2000 defense. For a level eight, that's definitely very surprising, but who knows about the effects. You can only use this card's name's first and second effects once per turn each. First effect, during your main phase, you can activate this effect. Each face-up monster on the field gains 100 attack times its level until the end of your opponent's turn. That's not bad, but it's not particularly amazing either. It's really just a boost up, and it requires you to also activate it yourself, which I actually have a bit of an issue there because it pretty much allows for your opponents to negate you. So. A bit of a vulnerability there it's not necessarily an effect i would want to use unless you used it strategically to bait out a negate in some sort of way though i think the opponent wouldn't necessarily want to negate it unless it was really crucial as for the second effect if this card on the field or in the hand is used as material for a fusion summon and is sent to the graveyard or banished you could target one despia monster other than this card itself, or level 8 or higher fusion monster in your graveyard, or among your banished monsters, special summon that monster. Which is not bad, at least it allows you to somehow recur your cards, or at least recover your resources, and allow you to further extend your plays, which is definitely nice. Overall, I'd have to say that this card is a bit too average for my liking, but I guess we'll find out. So the next card we have here is called Masquerade, the Crimson Gleam Dragon. I almost read that wrong, I actually saw it as Crimson Gleam, which wouldn't have made any sense. It's Crimson Gleam, uh, it's a level 8 Dark Fiend Fusion Effect Monster. Definitely really interesting to see that this archetype is focusing on fusions. With the level 8 monster, I was actually expecting it to be more of an Xyz deck, but seeing it now, it's really odd because it's going to be very hard to summon the level 8 effect monster we went over just then and seeing that we have here a fusion monster yeah we could always use it as a material which is great for fusion summoning but to summon it out in general would actually be quite a pain because it's a level 8 monster so definitely very odd but you could just play Valhalla and that might allow you to give off an easy summon which is not too bad but this particular card here is 2500 attack and 2000 defense and requires one despia monster plus one light or dark monster so kind of specific to despia but if you could actually splash despia into a dark lord deck or any other fairy deck you might be able to pull this off you can only control this card's name's second effect once per turn. So first effect, while you control this fusion summon card, your opponent must pay 600 life points to activate effects 
or cards. Definitely fantastic, I like this. It reminds me of Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon, which also does a similar thing. So with that being said, this is already looking like a pretty decent floodgate. And if it's a fusion monster, it should be pretty easy to summon out as well. As for the second effect, while this card is in your graveyard, if your opponent controls a Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Xyz or Link monster, quick effect, you could a special summon this card from the graveyard, but banish it when it leaves the field. Of course, when you special summon this from the graveyard, just reuse it as a material for your fusion summons, otherwise use it as a link material, or you could even use it as a synchro material, but the best one is to go for an Xyz material for this particular one, that way when you ditch it, it just goes back to the graveyard again, so you would be able to recycle that second effect over and over, which is definitely very fantastic of course. However, moving on, we have a spell card now. So this here is a quick play spell card. It's called Jubilation of the Branded. You can only activate this card's names first and second effect once per turn and only once that turn. So definitely very specific there, very restrictive actually. The first effect, reveal one monster in your hand, send one level eight fusion monster with 2,500 attack or defense with the same type as that monster from your extra deck to the graveyard, then apply the following effect. Discard the revealed monster, then add one Fallen of Albaz or one monster that specifically lists the card Fallen of Albaz in its text from your deck to your hand. So this is now actually going back to the previous cards that were actually introduced, focusing on the whole Fallen of Albaz card. So that would be quite interesting there, but you know, to focus on a card like Fallen of Albaz, I think is quite vulnerable for the deck itself. I can already see that a card like that could definitely be hurt by certain cards that could target a specific card and get rid of that. So it would be quite detrimental if something like that were to actually occur. So I don't really feel great about this particular support. Uh, really just depending on a specific card but the second effect is during the end phase of the turn that a fusion monster is sent to your graveyard you can add this card from your graveyard to your hand uh, not bad but like I said it's not particularly the most amazing but seeing that it can recover itself I would actually consider playing only one copy of this because that would really be all that you need in this particular deck might play two but i think one would definitely be enough to do the job so this card could potentially be a high rarity card but we'll have to find out and finally for the final support here we have branded in red very interesting a quick play spell card and you can only activate one card with this card's name per turn so target one despia monster or one fallen of albaz in your graveyard add that monster to your hand then you could apply the following effect. Fusion summon one level eight or higher fusion monster from your extra deck by banishing monsters from your hand and or field as fusion material, but that monster cannot attack directly this turn. A bit of an unfortunate situation there, but I guess as long as your opponent has a monster, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. This is also a quick play spell, so it is nice that it could go into a fusion summon really easily. You could actually just do this during the battle phase as well. Given that your opponent still has a monster on board, you could definitely turn this into an advantage. So it does play on a bit of strategic gameplay with this particular deck, but I do see a lot of different uh, holes to its armor in terms of vulnerability and as a result it doesn't seem like a deck that would perform too well in a meta standpoint but uh, with that being said definitely leave me your thoughts as to what you think about this because it is something that i might be missing out on perhaps it's not as weak as i think but we'll have to see because i'm always curious that just before a set comes out, you have some really great people who are actually able to come out with great combos for these particular decks before they've even been released and they show off pretty amazing things, giving us a good idea of whether or not it's worth it to invest into these particular archetypes. But with that being said, 
Uh, let me know everything that you think about this. Do you actually think it's good or not? You know, because for me, I'm kind of leaning on the side that it's not as good as I had hoped. But with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, definitely drop a like, share, comment and subscribe. It really does help and hit that bell notification as well. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll see you all next time.